All right, guys, we're going to show you how to set the timing on your VW. Um, and before we do the actual timing part, there's a lot of things you need to make sure. A lot of people just get, they think, oh, I just set my timing and that's it. But there's a lot of stuff that you need to cover before you set the timing because a lot of times people are trying to set their timing because they're having an engine running problem and sometimes that's not usually the issue or something else is affecting it. So we're kind of going to go over some of those things. First thing you want to do is you want to have one of these paint markers like that there and mark your timing marks so you can see them clearly. And this one here has only one timing mark. Most of your VWs will have more than one. So some have as many as four timing marks on it. One, I see one, two, three, four. So you'll have the first one is like seven and a half, and then the second one's like 10, and then this one on this side here is definitely the one you don't wanna be using. Um, it's, uh, it, it is actually like five degrees retarded, and that's on the late model cars where they have fuel injection and issues with trying to keep them to run clean. So we're not thinking about that anymore, really. If you're thinking about that, then you're gonna to wanna to learn how to work that mark, that mark, and you're gonna to wanna to use a different way to set your timing not the one shown in this video so again usually there's usually three so you have one here one here and one here this is your top dead center one that's the one we're going to be most interested in and in, in looking at so but first before you set your timing the first thing you want to know is if your dwell and your point gap is good and i'll tell you one of the most common things that i see today especially with younger folks uh working on their cars is they have a they have their rub block, block on their points wears out and they have a lot of times where their their point gap keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and that's what the problem usually is is this this is your distributor cam right here this part of the distributor and you can see it goes up and down okay and it's square shaped okay that needs to have lubricant on it at best you should at least have some regular grease on it but they do have a specific grease for that. Let's take a look. All right, so here it is, I found it. This was actually given to me by another guy who said to me, he says, hey, since you have Volkswagens, I know I'm never gonna be using this again in my life. So he had this a very, very long time. This is probably, this is a metal tube, and this is uh, this is Blue Streak Lubricam. So this is the proper stuff. They have they have this in a newer looking tube than this. And uh, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna lube that cam. Uh, you put a little bit on there. Don't put too much, because you don't want it to be too much because it'll actually fling off and then start having problems where you get bad connections in your points. So you just put just a little, like a little spot on there. I'll show you. I'm not gonna use this. I actually don't have many points in any of my cars anymore. Just like a little, well, it came out a little bit more than I wanted to. Put a little dot like that, okay? And then usually what I'll do is I'll carefully turn it around. And some of the old points back years ago, um, the non-Bosch ones that were made by Blue Streak actually had a little felt thing that rub block that rubbed against here to keep it always keep it lubricated. This is the most reason why people need to set their timing. If your point gap is always the same, your timing should always be the same. So that's why I'm trying to show you this. So if, if you're having to reset your timing and you didn't check your point, point gap first, it's a really good idea to check your point gap in advance. Um, so you do that by turning this around. It's been a while since I've done this because I do not have points in my car. I highly recommend that you would go to a pointless ignition if you don't have one now. It would be a great, a great opportunity to do that. Um, we have had not too many problems with the MP ones. Uh, there's some brands of them that are generic in a white box. I would not put that one on. Uh, Petronix or uh, what's the other one? CompuFire. Those are okay. So I believe that number three is a little bit flatter than the other lobes. You want to check it to make sure that you're not gapping your points on number three. Sixteen thousandths is your typical gap. Um, and it should, this one actually is perfectly right at 16 so that when you, if you tilt it a little bit, okay, and you feel resistance and then you feel it and then you tilt and you get it straight in there, 
there's almost no resistance, that's when you're right at 16. The actual better way to do your timing is to have a dwell meter uh, first and check your check your dwell with the dwell meter before you do your timing. That actually does a better job than using your points, just gapping your points, because sometimes you'll have a little bit of a, a burr on your points. And if you have that little tiny burr on there, or it's just a little uneven, then you might get an inaccurate uh, point uh, gap by using just a gapper. So using a dwell meter is actually a better way to do it. Your dwell should be at 45. So this is your old school dwell meter. Um, this is what I use, um, uh, one of these tile. And I, I usually set my dwell at 45 and then I just do, I move my point gap around until my dwell is at 45 rather than even using a feeler gauge. If, if you don't have a feeler gauge, if you don't have a dwell meter, you can use a feeler gauge. It just doesn't work quite as accurately. So again, what will happen is as your points start the rub block wears on your points and they start to close and sometimes that the 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 uh what are they called sometimes the cam will actually have some rust on it and debris on it you need to make sure it's really really polished and clean that's the other issues you, you will run into will make your points go shut but if your points go shut what happens is your dwell starts to go off and then what happens is your timing starts to retard slowly and a lot of times you'll see cars on the side of the road simply because the points went shut and they're sitting there trying to set the timing, not the, the right way to do it. You got to do your points first and then your timing. So let's talk about timing now. Now, if you refer to your old Volkswagen manual, um, I do not set my timing the way that they show in there. So what's required when you set the timing the way that I do it is you need a degree adjustable timing light. What this one is, is you see there's a little knob on here on the back. You can set it at zero. You can set it at whatever degrees you want your timing to be. And then all you have to do is make sure that that mark is straight up and down. And that's all you need to do. It's that simple. They sell you one like this here at Harbor Freight. They work okay. Um, they don't last that long. Sometimes they break. It's Harbor Freight stuff. So, you know, don't expect a miracle. But I've been using one of these for a while, and it's not too bad. Um, and I do happen to have one more points car, and that's the one we're working on right now, what I'm going to show you. So where you actually, if you know your timing's off, first thing I always do is check it. Uh, but if you know your timing is off, uh, what you want to do is loosen right here this little 10 millimeter nut and just a little bit. And to make it to where the distributor, you can tightly move it. Not really, really loose, not too tight where you have to jerk it, but just to where it's got a lot of resistance and you can move it back and forth, you know, without, you know, you can move it very easily to where you want it to be adjusted to. Most cars where I run my timing, and this is again up to you, is I run it right at 28 degrees total timing. And this is for most VWs. If you're having a pinging issue, if your car is pinging, you need to back it off. You can't run it quite that much advance, uh, but usually 28 degrees is good for most Volkswagens. If you have a large cam, if you have a performance engine, you can run a little bit more than that. But again, if you're getting a pinging problem, that's telling you you've got too much advance. You need to bring it back from, let's say you had it at 32, that'd be more advanced. So you bring it back to a little bit less to maybe 28 and then try it and drive it and make sure it doesn't ping. That's your most, that's your indicator that tells you you have too much timing. So typically uh, on your owner's manual and stuff like that, or in your manual Volkswagen Bentley or whatever, it will show you to set your timing at idle. Um, I do not set my timing at idle. I set it at, uh, at the highest amount it will go to. So in other words, what we do is we're going to start up the engine. We're going to increase our RPMs until with the timing light lit. Okay. So you know, I'm probably not going to be able to hear me while I'm while the engine's running, but we'll we'll increase our RPMs while the timing light while the trigger's pulled on the timing light, and we're going to watch until that advance, until the advance on the uh, until it stops going. So it'll start advancing into a certain point, and then it'll just at a higher high, at about say 2,800 or 3,500 RPMs or something like that. It'll stop moving. And that's where I'm going to be looking for is when it stops moving and that I want to set at 28 degrees.
So for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna use this digital timing light. It'll actually show you uh, a little bit more. You can read it a lot easier. Um, so we'll show you this on this digital one. So we're gonna go for 30 degrees on this car because we know it can do it. That's where we normally have it set. So what we do is, if you see, he's gonna go ahead and set it at 30. Okay, 24, 28, 29, 30. Okay, one, two, 30, right there. And then we're gonna rev the engine up until the, all the advance is done on the distributor. So go ahead and rev it up. Stop. See how it just stopped? Okay. A little bit more. We're at 28 degrees. 28 or 29 degrees. So we checked it. So what we're doing, hang on a second, let's go ahead and shut it off. So what we just did, if you can see, we made the distributor go through its total advance curve. We wanted to make sure that it fully advanced itself by revving up the R RPMs and holding it there for a little bit of time. The vacuum advance and the centrifugal advance, either one, whatever kind of distributor you have, has met its total advance. That means it's it's revved up, the, the weights have gone out, and it's given it its total advance for the, that it can do. And then we set that timing at 28 degrees what the book will tell you is to do it at idle but the thing is is some distributors don't put out a full 28 degrees advance so by doing this you're getting the most performance out of your vw engine and hopefully this helps you get through this and make be able to do that yourself so hopefully you understood what i just did what we just did by revving the engine to the total advance and then checking the timing with if you use this kind of light, which is probably what you're going to be using, you get that sucker set at 28 degrees and you rev the engine up until it's reaching that RPM. And when that timing mark stops, you'll all of a sudden see it's not going to advance anymore. And when that's at 28 degrees, when this is at when this light's at 28 degrees, the mark should be right with the case half, just like when you do your normal timing. So anyway, that's the way you do a total advance timing. Uh, one more thing I want to say is if you're going to buy points, make sure you buy the best Bosch ones available. Do not buy points for your car from China or any other, you know, like a regular parts store or anything like that for your Volkswagen. They just don't work well, and especially the condensers. Uh, the points, usually the problem with them is they the rub blocks are really cheap, and the rub blocks wear out really quickly, um, and with the condensers a lot of times those will fail so really honestly um, that's why I go to a pointless ignition most of the time I don't have one on this car only because it's 6 volt um, if it was 12 volt I would change it to a pointless ignition uh, maybe I'll put a link in here for you to get one of those uh, Carcraft sells them pretty good price also Eddie and Dave's garage in Orange County he has them as well in, in MP um, but you can also get a Petronics through them too, or whatever. And they're, the empty ones we've had no, no real major problems with. I'm not going to say that they're perfect like any of them are, but um, you know we haven't had too many problems with them. Okay, so I'll talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.